Hello and welcome to our software engineering group project presentation. Today, we're going to show how we transformed a classroom into a culture. Educators in a real business school are always looking to push the boundaries of an immersive learning environment with tools that can best create a comfortable and engaging experience for all students. One area of a, of a successful lesson that has been recognized by admin staff is effective classroom management. This includes class seating plans. How and where students are seated can have a positive impact on student behavior, academic performance, and class participation. But what is an effective seating plan and how do we make one? Well, an effective seating plan is one that encourages diverse interactions while still creating an engaging learning atmosphere. But creating one of these optimal plans is, can be almost impossible. Here's an example of a layout made in PowerPoint. This was, given, this was provided to us by Imperial Business School, and this is how, at the moment, they make their layouts. This is made using PowerPoint, which is a very rudimentary tool that's really hard to use, error prone, and takes a lot of time dragging individual students to the squares, and it doesn't look that good. Lecturers are really busy. You know, they have to teach modules, prepare materials for their classes, and grade assignments, amongst many other things. So the last thing they need to be doing is making a lecture hall seating plan for every single teaching session. And even if they somehow made a layout, the layout would be biased and there's no guarantee that it's actually effective. Thus, creating an effective seating plan is really difficult and time consuming, but it's definitely necessary to ensure an optimal learning experience. In addition, if we look at uh, this example, it might be really hard for students to find where to sit, especially if the hall contains hundreds of students, it's really hard to find where you're seated. So with this problem in mind, we envisioned a solution with the following objectives. So the solution would have to be easy for lecturers to make seating plans. As you mentioned, they're really busy and they would need a plan, a plan to be made in an instant. It should also be really easy for students to find where to sit. And it should, really, it should be able to quickly produce the best seating plan so to be effective and encourage better learning. And it should also be able to adapt to the needs of all lectures because every single lecture is different and, have, and they have different requirements. With these objectives in mind, we designed a solution, sit here, that revamps the current seating planner tool into a quick and seamless platform that optimally seats students. The easiest way for us to show the demo would be to walk you uh, would be to walk you through the platform as a lecturer. So let's suppose I'm my Imperial Business School lecturer and I, and I have an account on sit here. So we can log in here, and as you can see, my page is pretty empty right now because I haven't joined any modules. I can do that right here by clicking, and we have all these modules. So we can join a module. And then if you go back to home, it appears there. Uh, but let's go back to all modules and let's suppose I do not teach any of these modules. So I can create a new module pretty easily. So let's call it three, two, three, four, five. And let's suppose I teach computing. Now I can upload my student list. Um, again, you upload this from your PC and it can be a CSV or TXT file. Um, and it takes a few, few minutes, few seconds to process. And then you can click on review here and <clears throat> you can review how your Excel file has been processed, right? Um, you can change anything if you feel it's not correct. And after you're satisfied, you can continue and upload. Um, after your student list has been uploaded successfully, you can create your module. And as you can see, a new module is created, but it's empty because it has, has no new uh, lecture hall layouts. Uh, to make one in the top right corner, you can click a button and here's where we can make a new module. One of our main objectives was to create a module or uh, was to create a seating layout very quickly, right? Um, and so we do that here. So let's suppose I want to make a new layout and let's say I want to filter by gender. So that means I want to make sure that uh, men and women are sitting um, next to each other and make sure that uh, the class is separated evenly, right? So I can choose a filter there and I can choose a lecture hall. Right, so these are the eight lecture halls which Imperial Business School lectures already use, and because they were our clients, these are the ones that statically are loaded in every time. Right, so let's suppose I teach in a lecture hall LT3. As you can see here, it loads incorrectly, and um, there are all these other features and all these other filters and students uh, and all these other buttons which we'll talk about later. Right, for now, let's just quickly create a lecture hall. Oh, sorry, a lecture layout. Cool, we can create, and boom you have your lecture, lecture layout created, right? This takes the student list, which you uploaded earlier, and then all the, all the other filters and all the other restrictions you, uh, <clears throat> you specified uh, when you were creating the layout. 
um, as you can see here, um, since there were like around 30 students and 70 seats, it spread out the students um, pretty, pretty evenly. Um, and obviously these are stock images, but ideally um, a teacher would be able to upload avatars of uh, pictures of each student and they could they would be displayed here correctly. So let's suppose I want to show uh, names instead of, uh, of pictures. I can do that pretty easily here as well. Um, let's suppose um, uh, we want to shuffle students around, right? Let's say we want um, to have the same restrictions and the same filters to apply, but we want to just make sure the students are just seating different, seated differently, right? Uh, as a lecturer, you can do that pretty easily by clicking the shuffle button right here. And a couple of seconds, um, the the entire the entire hall is seated differently, or, or may, but the same restrictions still apply. People are still filtered, for example, here by gender, right? And that's how you make layouts. So I walked you through how you could uh, make a lecture layout pretty easily, right? Um, but let's suppose um, as a lecturer, I do not teach in one of the 10 halls which were already provided. As you can see here in the top right, when you click on man, when you hover over match lecture halls, you can see all the other previous lecture halls, uh, which you could see in the new layout, right? But let's suppose you don't teach in any of these. And let's suppose you want to make a new lecture hall, right? You can do that pretty easily by clicking custom. And that takes you to our custom lecture hall generating tool, right? You can give it a name here. Let's call it new hall. And once you toggle on edit mode, you can add a new subsection, right? By clicking that, it shows up with this pretty nifty tool, which you can add seats, you can add rows, um, you can rotate, um, you can move it around, um, obviously remove seats. And if you want, just completely remove the subsection itself. Right. So, and once, of course, once you've once you're comfortable with how the seats, how uh, the placement of uh, of your subsection, the placement of your seats, you can turn off edit mode, and you can see here we have this preview of how your hall would look like. Right. You can move this around as you wish, and once you're happy, you can save your layout. Um, and once it's been saved, if you go back to manage lecture halls, you'll see that your new hall has been added. And if you want to make a new layout, you can see when you hover over the lecture halls, if I, go, if I scroll down, your new hall is there, right? So one of our objectives, one of our main objectives was for um, our platform to be, ex, uh, to be extensible, right? We want different lectures of different modules to be able to uh, use platform. And that's why we made this custom generation tool for extensibility. Now let's take a look at some of the more advanced options of making a seating plan. As before, you can you know, obviously put in the title. And you can filter by fact, any factor and select uh, any lecture hall. Now here uh, we can we have a few more options for customization. So like, for example, let's say you have a student Troy who has to be sat at the front because he has special learning need. So that would be for example C20. So you could simply select you know Troy and he would be seated at C20, as we saw before. So you would simply select 20. Now let's say the lecturer doesn't want students to be seated in these three seats. For example, there are guests who are going to come. So let's say you can simply add the row to be empty uh, so that, that would be 49 to 51 and so you would simply select 49 and that would go until seat 51 because that's the front three and then with these restrictions you can make uh, your new lecture hall and once this is made you can uh, see that at c20 uh, troy has been seated here and the front three are empty so in this way uh, lecturers can make uh, halls in with a lot of you know there's a lot of flexibility in the options they can make so they can make a, cust uh, a lecture hall exactly the way they want to now, let, now let's take a look at sit here from the perspective of a student, Troy. Once again, we have a login. And once you the student logs in, he can see the modules uh, that he's enrolled in. And it's case C2345. He can simply click on it and see all the layouts. Now let's take a look at the a layout called title as a green dot, meaning he has not you know, seen it. Once we open this, we're uh, treated with the layout. And you can clearly see that everything else has been, has been blanked out. And the seat that's been hi highlighted in red is where Troy needs to go. And you can see this is Troy's seat. So in an instant, the student is able to see where, where he needs to sit. So this way, sit here is really easy to use for students because they can instantly see where they need to sit. Sit here consists of three parts, the front-end server, which provides the user interface, the intermediate server, and the back-end server. The front-end is the platform used by both the lectures and students, where the lectures generate seating layouts and the students view those layouts. The intermediate server handles user metadata and stores all seating layouts. The backend server handles the logic of allocating the students to the seats. The frontend server was built with Vue.js, which uses boot support styling. 
The intermediate server was built with Node.js and is hosted on an Express.js server and saves the state of the websites. Both intermediates and front-end servers are deployed on Heroku. The backend is developed on Python with the Flask framework and is deployed on DigitalOcean. MongoDB Atlas was used as a NoSQL database for storing information about users, layouts, and modules. The frontend communicates with intermediate and backend servers through Axios calls. This architecture was chosen for the reason that it allowed the separation of the sitting layout generation logic from the website code. Vue.js was chosen due to its simplicity and reusability in coding and optimization of redundancies. Python was chosen in the backend considering the number of ML libraries it provides. MongoDB database was chosen because of the scalability of the database and the flexibility in the structure of the content source and the ease management of clusters. Now I will talk about the seating allocation algorithm that is used in the backend. To optimize the seating arrangement based on factors such as gender and nationality, we decided to use the mu plus lambda evolutionary strategy, which consists of the following stages evaluation, selection, mutation, and recombination, which is repeated until we reach the stop condition, which is the set number of epochs. The fitness function scans through the seating arrangement for every adjacent three students and uses the following criteria. If a factor has the same value for the left and the middle one, then a score of 1 is added. If it's the same for the middle one and the right one, then a score of 1 is added. But if all three have the same value, then a score of 2 is subtracted. This ensures that there is no clustering based on a factor, but there is also a chance of meeting people with a similar background. To generate the randomly generated variations, we use the following mutation operator, which swaps randomly selected pairs of students. The seating arrangement is mapped to the seating layout like this. To evaluate the backend, we first decided to check the performance of our evolutionary algorithm. As you can see in the graph, the maximum fitness score of the population gradually increases as the number of epochs increases. We also decided to benchmark the algorithm, and it takes around 0.554 seconds on average. For the algorithm to execute, which is a reasonable time for 100 epochs. We also decided to do unit testing for the different components that are used in the algorithm to ensure that they are functioning properly. To further evaluate the backend, we decided to compare the performance of the different versions of the algorithms during the different iterations. These graphs show the fitness score of the optimal seating arrangement for the different iterations of the algorithm. The restrictive configurations mean that some of the seats were left blank in the seating layout. And the seating arrangement uses nationality as a factor. The reason the evolutionary algorithm performs better is because it explores a much wider variety of solutions than the previous versions. To test our final product, we conducted testing with our users where they tested out our final product and filled out a form afterwards. Overall, our stakeholders were really happy with our product find it easy to use and made creating seating plans easier. When asked how navigable the UI was, 84% of people rated it eight or above, with only one person rating it a five. Other feedback we got indicated that lecturers found the lecture hall creator tool easy to use and the module management such as joining and searching for modules was really intuitive. We also got some constructive criticism, such as the inclusion of pinning layouts and creating a more intuitive filtering tool when making seating plans. Overall, the platform was useful and well received by our stakeholders. So to conclude, our platform was developed with our objectives in mind. First one was to make our platform really easy for lecturers to make their layout. Hence, we have our layout filter options. And we also want this platform to be extensible. So we developed a custom hall tool. We also want it to be easy for students to find their seats. So we have our seat highlighting tool. All these paired with our very strong seating allocation algorithm achieves our initial objectives. In terms of future work, we would like to automate the process of lecture hall layout creation. So currently we have a custom tool and a potential feature would be enabling staff to upload PDFs of seating plan and we will detect the seat number to generate the desired layout. The final platform met all of our initial objectives and was well received by Imperial Business School. 
Thank you for watching.